I might want to focus in here on Michael Thomas, if you may. Sure. Um, because the slant boy moniker, I want to push back on it. I think that's been unfair. And I think, I think Michael Thomas has had a marketing problem. Is that fair? Yeah, I, I, I have a marketing problem. That's a really, that's a good way of putting it. Um, you know, I think in the same way that folks think that Deontay Johnson is just a little pop gun receiver because he was playing with the corpse of uh, Ben Roethlisberger the last couple of years. I think that my, people think that Michael Thomas is just slant boy because he was playing with the corpse of Drew Brees for a certain, not not quite as corpse-ish as Ben Roethlisberger. It's hard to get more zombified than On the scale of corpse. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, not quite as mummified as Ben last year. But I mean, this was something that the great Chris, Rus Chris, Chris Wessling was pointing out since like 2017 that Brees' arm was in a rapid state of decline. And that's right around when Michael Thomas got there. I mean, he certainly is you know, his overall success rates in RP are boosted by the fact that he runs a lot of shorter routes, but I just posted this the other day. I mean, Michael Thomas was unbelievably good in like the 2018 to 2020 run. His 2018 success rate versus man coverage is still second all time that I've charted since 2014 after the great Stefan Diggs. Great against zone coverage, great against press coverage. Like he wins at every level. The route success rate charts will show you that. And you know, again, this to the slant boy moniker. Uh, you know, you can look at some of these guys. Like um, I posted other route charts of guys like AJ Brown, who we talked about. Guys like Julio Jones. You know, DeAndre Hopkins. The route percentage charts are not that far off. But yeah, Michael Thomas gets separation, gets open at all levels of the field, whether he is. 90% of that player, 85% of that player, or I mean, probably not a hundred percent, but I don't know, man. It's the more you look at Michael Thomas, the more you remember how good he was. And I think RP shows you how good he was in isolation at his peak. And I'm, I'll say, I'm, I know I was excited about it going into 2020 and or 2021 and that and we never saw it, but I'm excited to see what he looks like with Jameis Winston, because Jameis is certainly not going to be throwing a bunch of pop gun passes. Yeah, Nick Underhill doesn't miss, and Nick Underhill keeps saying that Michael Thomas is close to 100%. So who am I to oh, no, bet against uh, Michael Thomas at this point? Literally. How high time... How high do you think he can go that you would be like, I, I don't want to I don't want to take him? Okay, to put this into context, he's going as wide receiver 29. I think that should probably even flip with Chris Godwin right now, who's going as wide receiver 28. I agree. Um, and then just ahead of that, though, is a man we already talked about in Rashad Bateman and DK Metcalf and – Brandon Cooks, Hayden. I think right in that level. I think I think that's fine right there. Yeah. Maybe it should be based on this tweet. Shouldn't he be comeback boy? Like the <laughs> success in comebacks was even higher than slants. Come on now. Yeah, and well, you know. but seriously, the last time that we saw a healthy Michael Thomas, he was the number one wide receiver in points per game in fantasy football. And then Jameis Winston supported the number two and number three wide receivers in fantasy football that season in Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Now, was he just allowed to unleash the football and throw just a ridiculous amount of interceptions? For sure. Um, but the combination of Michael Thomas and Chris Olave plus whatever Jarvis Landry has left, like this Saints team, if the offensive line holds up, if they allow Jameis to be the 35 attempt quarterback rather than the 22 attempt quarterback, we're going to get some fire. We're going to get some spice, some sizzle from this offense. And I'm excited for that for sure. Yeah. I love Chris Olave. I, I think this could be a, a fun, really fun offense. They feel sort of the saints feel volatile to me as well. Not quite as volatile. Maybe actually maybe even more volatile than the Titans, but um, there's definitely a way that if you squint at it, you can, you can see a really, really fun fantasy offense. And I just don't think the public will ever get to a point where they're taking Michael Thomas because of the way things have gone. Um, at a range where I would be kind of all out on him. Like there's no, there's no way I think he'll get north of like wide receiver 24. Um, and I, I don't know if he has a, a top 12 ceiling in his range of outcomes, but I definitely think he has, you know, a top 20 ceiling in his range of outcomes if he stays healthy. Hey, slow down before you get out of here. Be sure to hit subscribe down below. So one, you know, when we post something new on the channel, but two, if you're new here, check out the rest of what we offer. Click one of these things that's all around me right now. Okay. Thanks a lot. See you next time.